We're here at the Japan Mobility Show, David Chow Automotive Press. We've been tackling all these booths. We got uh, so many electric vehicles here on stage from Toyota. We weren't expecting an electric Land Cruiser. David, what are your thoughts? This is crazy, right? We have a Land Cruiser Series, 70 Series, 250 Series, 300 Series, and now yeah. they're saying this is an electric car for the Land Cruiser fans. Yes. However, I do have one complaint, Kirk, and that is this is not body on frame. It is unitized body. But I did interview the chief engineer of this uh, model yesterday, and they said they want to expand the notion or thinking what Land Cruiser stands for. And even though it's a unitized body, they say it has all the capability of a Land Cruiser name. So they say it doesn't matter if it's body on frame or not, this thing can go anywhere. What do you think? Yeah, we know Toyota is starting to realize the power of branding more than ever. And they want to use the Land Cruiser through as many products as possible. If we look down here, we see Land Hopper. And this thing is a portable, off-roading, one-person scooter. It's super cute. It's battery electric, just like the bigger one behind us. But you know the interesting thing is that when uh, some of these things came about, a lot of publications said Land Hopper will be the name for the small electric the Land cruiser. cruiser. And that's not the case. We no. knew that can't be. This is Land Hopper. It's like, a great it? name for this. I yeah. Think. <laughs> so before we go back it. to this one, let's talk about this one just yeah. briefly. This is called the EPU or the electric pickup truck. I think this would be a, definitely a North American product. It is. Yeah. I, when I see this vehicle, I think of it as a shrunken down Rivian and it would definitely yeah. come in under that uh, in pricing. But they also have a full interior. Unlike that Land Cruiser back there, we'll be able to take a, a small peek, maybe not open the doors, but at least look through the glass and see the interior. But David, what are your thoughts on the design? Yeah, so the design is quite uh, polarizing. Apparently the county, which is a North American arm of uh, California design for Toyota, did the exterior design. And it's not like anything else out there because they have a kind of a very much electric car look from here down, but it's got a little, you know, hump that comes up. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, I'm, it doesn't look like a Tacoma-ish. It doesn't look oh, like anything else no, out there. Absolutely, yeah, so, no, there's none of that the, muscular, macho sort of grill that we see on Tacoma, Forerunner, Tundra, Sequoia. This looks like a car from the front. Yeah. And it is, like you said, unibody. Um, but Toyota is getting away, like pretty much all the vehicles here don't have a Toyota logo. They're doing the all heritage Lettering typing again, for, yeah. for everything. And I think that's, that's I, I actually like yeah. it because I think it ties together a lot of their design pieces better and you can see it typed out as yeah. well in the electric Land Cruiser over there. But the important thing is that this could be the first iteration of a fully electric truck, a uh, compact truck for Toyota, which is an important market yeah. because Ford Maverick is doing well. We have the Honda Santa Cruz. We have obviously always had the Honda Ridgeline. So this could be their new entry into electric truck market, which is very important, maybe even for markets outside North America. And so people might be asking, could, it, could this be the Stout brand? I'm not quite convinced yet no. that name is going to come back, but they did tease that name a couple of times. So yeah, this I could be the truck. This could be yeah. one. What could be the Stout would be a smaller vehicle with a gasoline or hybrid setup. This is uh, like a, a smaller F-150 Lightning, but it's also kind of the same segment as the Tacoma, which Toyota owns that segment in North owns America. Segment, yeah. We have some really cool features in this truck. We'll look at the interior in a little bit. I want to come to the back because yeah. tailgates and functionality is all the name of the game we're talking about trucks. Yeah. This tailgate has hinges in it so it can fold up. You can, make, can, pull you it can out extend the bed this way. There's mm -hmm. lots of cool stuff you can do with it. And you have the mid gate here. Um, which when you're using unibody, yeah. this is allows for this sort of imagination and functionality to, to take place here. And so if uh, I, it's, it's absolutely incredible. So if I could add from an engineering perspective, a couple of things, because it's an electric car, you don't have the frame underneath, you can really lower the bottom of the, um, the pickup bed. So you look, look how deep it is. Yeah. This is way deeper than Tacoma or even Tundra. And like, uh, like uh, Kirk said, we can fold down this, the seat, not the seat, but I guess it is a seat and then yeah, go right the through, would fold right? into the so floor. You can't do that on a gasoline powered car. So if that becomes truly part of the, whatever this is going uh -huh. to be called, it could be a game changer. Yeah, the seat actually flips up now that I can see that you can see the seat inside, it has flipped up. Yeah. And it has a rugged bottom to it uh, to extend yeah. the, the, the durability That's of the really cargo cool. area back here. But we're gonna go back to Land Cruiser because we don't have too much time. And you know, I think the most important question that I have is, was this born as a Land Cruiser for the electric vehicle market or was it supposed to be something else and they decided to add a Land Cruiser name? Well, according to Chief Engineer, this was designed from the very beginning 
to be a Land Cruiser. So we're, you know, Kirk and I'm thinking maybe it's like moving to a slightly different market, like a Range Rover. Range Sport Rover. They have Range market. Rover. Range Rover in their sights. That's absolutely where they're, where they're headed. The interior in this, my guess would be something close to like the Century SUV that we yeah. were just in earlier today. It's going to go upscale. This thing is going to cost a hundred thousand dollars. Would be my guess uh, right. when you're putting that Land Cruiser badge on it. And if you even, you know, just going along with what uh, Kirk is saying, even some of these design features, Land Cruiser have some of well, these kind of features like as Rover, well. Yeah. Uh, big fender bulges, look at how much it sticks out yep. here. And the chief engineer just emphasized how much of the muscular look this has. The wheels is coming right out. In fact, the wheels is actually sticking out of the uh, actual wheel wells, yep. which wouldn't be practical and possible. But um, if you look at the side, all oh, the angular design, also reminiscent of Range Rover, uh, and even coming up here, a little bit here, you got some of the Land, uh, Land Cruiser Prado. Look, that's Prado tra traditionally has the something J like the this. The J250 has a little exactly. bit of that for the newest yeah. generation. And we're mentioning Range Rover over and over, because also with this roof line. It yes. It gradually yeah. slopes back. And then once you get to this uh, C-pillar area, it takes another angle and comes even further yeah. down to, for, for that more sporty look. So we often say kind of the floating roof design, because it's all blacked out, blacked out here. It looks like it's floating. And you're absolutely right, that's another Land Rover or Range Rover look. Although FJ Cruiser have some of that floating look with a white too. roof line. Um, but let's go to the back here because yeah. we're the kind of running out of simple. time. A light bar that goes across, but this is probably the most striking thing is kind of like the third tail light up above. Actually circles around there, we have four dots. David, do you have any idea what these four dots up top would be for? Yeah, it's probably some kind of a radar related thing. Like uh, that's the antenna, but... Um, so it could just be cosmetic, but if, if uh, oh, sorry, I've been losing the audio here, so that's not a good sign. <laughs> and so we apologize for a slight <laughs> error, but as you know, we're doing this live One stream take. style. Uh, so it could just be a design philosophy, or it could be some kind of a, a sensor, or I don't know, rain mm -hmm. sensor, not rain sensor, but maybe some kind of solar slash environmental sensor maybe. But I think it's just a, just a concept at this point. Yeah. Now the interesting thing is that it's actually quite a big car. Uh, the chief engineer said this is bigger than the current uh, Land Cruiser. Look how oh, stretched it is. Oh, the wheelbase is huge. Yeah, wheelbase is this. really is long, and which is um, really uh, what happens with electric cars because you don't have an engine. You can push the envelope, and the longer the wheelbase, you get better ride, better ride more uh, stable cornering, and obviously better interior cabbing, although you sacrifice a little bit with the trunk space. Yeah. And that's the direction for all electric cars. Uh, beautiful design, regardless. Do I like having a Land Cruiser name on this, I'm not sure. I'm not it, sure it about It should that. be called Land Cruiser Sport. And yeah, that's what it says. It does say, you know, SE, Land Cruiser Sport Electric. Yeah. So we know Range Rover has a Range Rover Sport. I think that's kind of the design that they're going for. Uh, but this is definitely a bigger vehicle than the Range Rover Sport. Maybe the full-on Range Rover, right. the full-size Range Rover is what they're looking. Now, the interesting thing is that they did not show the uh, Toyota BZ 5X, a BZ 5X here at the show. And so, you know, we think maybe a variation of this to be built in Kentucky could be the BZ5X sharing the same platform with this one. Uh, but that, yeah, I would assume that would have a similar wheelbase to this, but I think the cabin for the BZ5X, since it's really yeah. focusing on that three, three row family mover, it's gonna have a more accommodating, less sporty roof line uh, right. to it. Yeah, but this is a three row SUV as well. It is. Chief Engineer talked about that quite a bit. Uh, and also, finally, I talked to him about the ride, the feel of this thing. Is it going to feel like Land Cruiser because it's a unibody and not uh, not a body on frame? He said, well, you know what? There's lots of people in the market who want a Land Cruiser capability, but smooth highway ride, comfortable suspension, and this is for them. So slightly different market. So you know what? It will be just as capable as Land Cruiser, according to him, but have the comfort the uh, in terms of suspension, the feel of a more upscale models like a Range Rover, and if they can get that right, you know what? It's going to be an amazing competitor to Range Rover, although it's a Toyota brand and not a, not obviously a Lexus brand. Yeah. What do you think? I think we summed it up perfectly. But you got to finish it off. Long gotta, video, yeah. more to come. Keep an eye on our channels. Both of us subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you think of all the things we're doing together. We're going to keep bringing more and more. Signing off for now. Bye, guys. See you guys.